Taking you out to the broadcast booth, where we'll join our commentators, Brandon Guyton and Charles Davis. Larry, we are about an hour's drive southwest of downtown Boston in the area known as Patriot Place, Gillette Stadium, here in Foxborough. A moment ago, the pride of Massachusetts, the Patriots, introduced to this, as always, sold-out crowd as they get set to go head-to-head -head with the Jacksonville Jaguars. Hi again, everyone. I'm Brandon Gordon. Welcome to the NFL on EA Sports. With me, as always, Charles Davis. And, Charles, we look at a matchup like this. It's really the running backs that may take center stage here today. And in today's football, they're still valuable, not just as runners, but guys who can catch the ball as well. It's really the number of touches that determines things these days. Steven Goskowski now has this one teed up, and we are underway from Gillette Stadium. This is taken about seven yards deep, and no thought to bring this one out. He'll just go down to a knee, and he'll take over at the 25. Leading the Jags out of the field is a man who's officially 1-0 as a starter in the playoffs, and that's Blake Bortles. Now, he only threw for 87 yards, and you mentioned it to me off air. We talked about it. He ran for more yards than he threw for. Hey, they got the win. 10-3 wasn't pretty, but a win is a win is a win. You're exactly right. If you accentuate the positive of what we saw, he knew the right times to take off, use his legs to their advantage, pick up key first downs, key yardage, and helped his team out. Yeah, he didn't throw the ball particularly well. He's 12 of 23, as you mentioned, 87 yards. But those 88 rush yards were huge. And the bottom line for a quarterback is finding ways to win the game. So we can criticize him all we want about his throwing, and he'll need to improve that as he continues to move forward. But remember this, they picked up the fifth-year option on it. So for everyone thinking that Blake Bortles might be on his way out, let's wait and see. There may be some competition, but Blake Bortles could easily be the quarterback going forward for the Jacksonville Jaguars. See if they stay on the ground for second down. Again, it's Fournette. Two yards on the carry there, and it's going to lead him to third down. They're the starters for the 29th overall defense. That's what the New England Patriots are ranked on this side of the ball, but still, obviously, a very good team that gets a bye in the playoffs, but can they make a run through the playoffs with the defense they've got? Now, that ranking, that's the lowest among all playoff teams, it is. isn't it? I think that they can, and here's why. Remember how the season started where they looked like they were just getting blitzed every week by offenses where they give up 20 or more points in the first, yep, four, first games. four games? But over the next 12, they only gave up 20 points twice in that span. So, yeah, I, I know the number is 29th in the league, but these are the Patriots. They figure things out, and I think that they're going to play well enough in the playoffs that the defense won't be the issue. It's a loss of a full three yards, and it brings up fourth down. Every year I go to the combine and marvel at the speeds that linebackers are running nowadays. They run like DBs, and let's face it, they know how to finish plays, too. Eyes up, head up, run right through them. So on fourth down, here's Brad Nortman on to punt it away. Back deep, Danny Amendola for New England. And he'll get this away into the icy winter air. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the Patriots take over. The Patriots charging on the field, led by the NFL's regular season leader in passing yardage, Tom Brady, 4,577 yards. Of course, they got to sit and enjoy their bye this last week. That's <laughs> death taxes and the Patriots sitting <laughs> out the wild card round, right? <laughs> Great call. And here's my question for you. With the year that Tom Brady had, could he be the oldest MVP in league history to you? I think so. Yeah, I think the momentum is definitely trending in that direction. And why not? 32 touchdown pass, eight interceptions on the year. How about his last four seasons? I know you're not supposed to bring that into it, but you can't help it. 129 touchdown passes, just 26 interceptions. Oh, by the way, won the Super Bowl last year as well. This guy knows what he's doing. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. 
as the offensive starters pop up on your screen, Charles, let me ask you, Chris Hogan, what does he bring to this offense? A guy that you look at and really don't circle in your game plan, if there's other guys that you look at, then you realize this guy can do damage. Finds his way open on almost every snap. Second down following the run. Brady to throw on second down. And the Jags get to him as down he goes. Yannick Ngakwe able to collapse the pocket and drop him for a loss of three. And we say it all the time, have to be able to get rid of the ball sooner than that. You have to help your offensive line out. They're going to protect you as best they can. And if you're getting three to five seconds to throw the ball, they're doing a really nice job. But when you hold it and give up a sack, you're really almost discrediting their work. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. Throwing his Brady on third down. And he's got an open man. It's Gronkowski. Brady to Gronkowski for the Patriot first down. A lot of tight ends just use their size and their strength, try to occupy some space and kind of body people away and catch the football. But not this guy. He's a refined route runner. Makes me wonder if he took some dance classes in his background with his footwork. here on first down and he finds Danny Amendola and he's taken down but not before he gets this into enemy territory across the 40. A really nice gain of 25 yards. And when you're playing a quarterback with some experience and some moxie you enter the danger zone when you decide to blitz him because if he's able to diagnose as he did on that play, he can hurt you downfield. He reads defenses so well, doesn't he? He really does, and the best part about that play for him, I don't think that was his primary target. I don't think so either. I think he had the read, figured out where the blitz was coming from, and went to a secondary target for a really nice game. And now a first down following that long game. Snap comes at one, and it's Brady. Going underneath for Lewis. And they're able to get this one past the 30, down to the 25. 11 more on that one, and another first down. Nice little nifty play for him there. Yeah, that's the ability to read a defense and utilize players that don't often get picked up in coverage easily. And I'm talking about being able to use the backs out of the backfield. Because I know that when I used to cover, Hey, we got everybody cut. Oh, he just snuck out there, and they just got a nice first down there. What do we love to say? Get those backs into space, right? They were able to do that there. Nice pickup on first down. Fresh set of downs here. Brady gives this one to Lewis. And able to work his way down to the 16. Give him nine on the carry that time, and they're set up with a second and one. If these kinds of lanes are available, you have to feel like he's going to have a pretty big game on the ground. Yeah, you can tell early on he's got a little burst in his step, and that's a big pickup right there on first down. And the next snap coming inside the red zone here. They try again with Lewis, and he'll get it here to the 10-yard line. The six yards on the pickup, and it leaves him with a first and goal. That's a good, nice, crisp run for a first down. I wonder if the defense might have been loosened up a little bit, maybe anticipating a pass instead of the run that they got.
Brady now on first down. It's caught outright Amendola. And a pretty little juke move there on a nice game. A gain of nine there sets up second and goal. I don't think it's a surprise they're throwing the football early. We expected that. They told us they were going to come out firing but four for four on the opening drive. They like that. <laughs> they don't just like it. They love it because now everyone gets locked in. The confidence jumps up. Everyone's easy about what they're doing out there. And by the way, they're looking at the sideline thinking to themselves and expressing, let's keep throwing it. We're doing pretty well. They'll run for it with Deion Lewis. And he'll go backwards, losing yardage to the five. He lost four there, and it's third down. Good opening quarter for him. Remember, he had the sack earlier. Now a tackle for loss, another tackle for loss. He's really making it tough on the play caller, though, isn't he? Because it's one thing to try and adjust when a guy is disrupting your running game. But when he's messing up your passing game as well, they may have to devote at least a second guy to him to try and keep him away from their plays. Now from back at the five, this is third and goal. From the gun, it's Brady. And that is incomplete. This team is not going to make it easy for you. They're a physical group, and we just saw it there on that play. He came in, made the contact, just as he's trying to haul it in. So on fourth down, Brady will yield to Goskowski for the field goal try. This is a fairly straightforward 22-yard short attempt. And the 11-year veteran bangs it through, and the Patriots jump out to a 3-0 lead. And that field goal caps an 11-play drive. That's a lot of offense to run to only get three points, but they'll take them. Anytime you can put anything on the board, you run to your sideline somewhat happy. Goskowski now converted for three. Now he'll kick this one away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. Here comes the Jaguars offense as they get set to go again. And a three and out on that first drive. We'll see if they can do better here. They should have a better opportunity because the nerves should be settled now. That first series, everybody goes out a little extra emotion. So now they get a chance to go back out and say, okay, now we're into the game. Let's go play and play as best we can. You almost get a mulligan then on that first drive. Sometimes it absolutely serves that way. You get a second opportunity. Nothing big happened. But then again, you didn't commit any mistakes either. Off you go. They'll start out on the ground. It's Leonard Fournette. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. 16 yards that time on the pickup for the Jags and a first down. But Fournette was really bottled up last week against the Bills. 21 carries, 57 yards. At front seven, though, they were strong. They really were, and it's tough to run against what Buffalo presented. But if you just keep giving Leonard Fournette carries, things tend to work out. Remember earlier in the season against the Pittsburgh Steelers, who they were end up play, end up playing in the playoffs, he had 181 yards. This guy went over 1,000 yards in just 13 games as a rookie. Leonard Fournette's an absolute force and is only going to get better. The yardage total second highest by a Jags rookie. And he'll be brought down at the 45-yard line. Give him eight on the play, and that'll make it second down.
And that'll be accepted, of course, and that moves him back five. Still second down. After the penalty, it's Fournette. And he'll get it down here to the 43. Eight yards on the pick up there, and it moves the sticks. And Leonard Fournette impressing there with that run. It's hard to believe that no Jacksonville Jaguar has broken 1,000 yards since Maurice Jones drew in 2011. I think Leonard Fournette could be that guy. Even with the ankle injury last year at LSU, still averaged six and a half yards per carry. And absolutely intimidated opposing defenses. A lot of guys simply didn't want to tackle him. Three, three, nine, nine. Now a play fake here on first down. Under a heavy rush and down he goes. Goodness, was that a defensive back that got to him with the pressure? <laughs> well, look at the former defensive back. You're, you're all smiles up here. I hope everybody can hear my smile on that play. Throwing on second down. Looking and finding Alan Hearns. And he'll be taken down, but not before getting this inside the 30. That one goes for 24 yards. the offense lining up first and ten. A fake to Fournette. Now it's Bortles to throw. Caught right side. It's Lewis. Eventually wrangled down before reaching the 20, but a strong run. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. There are so many things to watch for when you play defense and reading your keys. You always hear about that and having your eyes in the right place. Sometimes your eyes can fool you. How about that play action there? And it sprang the big guy, didn't it? Able to dump it over the top to him. Now a play fake. Bortles. The ball comes out, and fortunately for him, he's able to get it back, but it will be a loss on the play. Well, that was a big oops right there, but how about his ability to correct it? Loses the football, able to get it back himself. Yeah, pounced right back on it, keeps possession. Seventh play of this drive. This is third and four. Bortles going to throw. This is intercepted. Picked off by Super Bowl 49 hero Malcolm Butler. He's at the 50, the 30, 20, 10. And he takes this one back into the end zone to the Patriot it's a touchdown. Now that was a beautiful play. A pick six. How would you punctuate something like that, partner? What do you mean with an exclamation mark? Exclamation mark, a big word. What would you do with the ampersand? I like it.
Now Steven Goskowski on for the extra point. It's up and good, and that'll increase their lead to 10 zip. A heck of a play there defensively, getting the interception, navigating his way into the end zone for the touchdown. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. This is fielded at the goal line. <laughs> and all that work, but he stopped where he ultimately would have been, and he simply taken a knee, and that's the 25-yard line. And let's shift now to talking about the Patriots' defense. And we're going to get a peek at some of the hits that have helped them get this first half lead. And you know how the best hits happen? by being really good on that side of the ball in terms of fundamentals, being in the right spot, diagnosing plays well, and being there at the point of attack. They are really making it happen. to try again after the pick six. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. He was looking to get it to Alan Hearns that time, and that'll bring up second down. Well, they're slinging it, and then there's one you got to put a timer on, huh? I mean, that one came in hot. That came in hot, but overthrown out of his reach and incomplete. Second down, here's Fournette. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll set up a third down. Getting the sense, Charles, are going to put a big emphasis this afternoon on the run game. And why not? What we're seeing so far, working pretty well from them. And here's the best part. We always talk about the best performers do their job when the lights come on. I think he likes natural light best. the snap we hit all zeros as time has run out on the first quarter of play 10 zip our score and we'll return to foxborough after this the nfl on ea sports is presented by snickers you're not you when you're hungry snickers satisfies alongside the former defensive back charles davis i'm brandon gordon it's jaguar football as we begin quarter number two they've got a third down and five to start things out from the gun. It's Bortles. And he's got it to Hearns. Bortles on the hook up to Hearns for the Jaguar first down. It's Bortles. He's going to launch this thing way downfield. And incomplete. An excellent play downfield. Should have been picked off, really. But second down instead. Well, nearly another interception there. That would have been two drives in a row 
with a pick. He's got to start taking care of the ball way better than what we're saying. Interestingly, that throw was probably worse than the one he threw the interception on last drive, but fell incomplete. Offense still needing 10 yards, second down. on the give to Fournette and this time he's going backwards so after the no gain on the last attempt here they get him behind the line we think Brandon I like the intensity this defense is showing right here in these first few drives they're not just holding the line because they're doing their job but they're doing more than that aren't they they get a nice push into the offensive backfield and a great example right there for the loss on the tackle the Jaguars on third down just one for three thus far. This is third and 14. The play fake to Ivory. Now Bortles. And that's going to be too high. Out of bounds and incomplete. I tell you, Brandon, this defense is playing with some confidence. Haven't allowed a point yet. Flying to the football. I'm telling you, there's almost 11 to the ball on every snap. Another nice job there to force an incompletion. Here's Brad Nordman now. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. And this one hits at the three and then bounds into the end zone for a touchback. Now the Patriot offense set to take over again. And they had three points last time, but they didn't want three points because they were well within range of scoring a touchdown. We'll see if they can do better now. I'm with you on that one. Let's just go ahead and be frank about the whole thing. The only one happy about the three-point kicker. Exactly. <laughs> he put it through the post. That's going to help him in contract time. But that offense, they're thinking, let's get in the end zone this time. I don't know if that helped him in contract time. You, you could have kicked that one through. I don't know about that. Toe bash. I don't know about toe that. Bashed it. <laughs> Super toe. So start things on first down to Deion Lewis. And the reinforcements come in as they're going to stop him behind the line. That'll set him back with a loss of three on the play. And that'll make this a second and 13. That goes down as a loss against his rushing stats. But really, should he have to absorb that one? He had no chance on that play before they overwhelmed him. Pretty much on top of him before he could take his first step. Now Brady throwing on second down. Incomplete. The wideout Chris Hogan, the intended receiver, and it's third down. Had the right idea there, trying to throw it to the sideline, but he led him just a little bit too much, trying to get it out to his receiver. Ends up falling to the ground, incomplete. And the Jags have five in the secondary here on third down. They go play action for White. Now it's Brady. He's going to air it out deep for Ammon. Oh, this is taken in. It's complete. And all the way down to the 36-yard line. A big play there for the Pats on third. 46 yards. I've got to make sure that I don't take Tom Brady's greatness for granted, that we make it routine. How about that throw right there? Yeah. Another, another great completion. And you know one area where he honed his throwing? He was a catcher in high school. He was actually drafted by the Expos in 1995 in the 18th round. Wow, that would have been something to see him behind the dish. Think he's gunned down a few guys? Gunned down a few guys trying to steal second. That would have been fun to watch. Play action. Now it's Brady. Allen has it. Left side. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Seeing that play and understanding just how tough it is to cover tight ends, especially the ones running around the NFL nowadays. 
Makes me glad I didn't make it in that league. I would have had a really difficult time. But now you get to sit up here with me. Yeah, and that's fun, isn't it? <laughs> and what a really nice game right there on first down for them. Brings up a nice second down for them. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll go down here right around the 23-yard line. It'll go as a gain of six that time, and it moves the chains as well. Second and two is prime time for a little bit of a gamble, isn't it? Open up the playbook. Go play action. Toss that bad boy deep. But in this situation, go ahead and give it to your back. Let him pick up a first down. Keep the sticks moving. First and ten, here's Brady. And Gronkowski's got it, complete over the middle. And he'll get it down this time to the 17. A gain of six there on first. For the Patriots did not have him last year when they won the Super Bowl. He was out for the playoffs, but he is healthy and ready to go this year. And isn't that one of the more remarkable things, that they won a Super Bowl without having that weapon in their lineup? Well, guess what? He was back this year. Big time season, 69 catches, over 1,000 yards, eight touchdowns. His fifth All-Pro selection. Yeah, they're really happy to have him. They don't want to try and win a Super Bowl. Oh, and Lewis lost the football. Wow. That ball gets knocked free, but a teammate comes along and scoops it up. Almost like, it's almost like baseball. Guys at bat, people are on base in scoring position. One guy doesn't get them home. The next guy comes through and picks him up. And avoids the turnover. New England on third down. They've been okay, two for three thus far. Here it's third and two. Brady going to try and throw on third down. And that's complete to Lewis. And he's able to pick up the first down before he's tackled right at the 10. Give him a gain of four, able to convert, and that sets up first and goal now. Instead of the running back in New England, sometimes they like to call them the passing backs. They, they get them the ball in different ways, don't they? They certainly do. Think about the ones they've had in recent vintage. You talk about Kevin Falk, Danny Woodhead, Shane Vereen. James White could have been the MVP in the Super Bowl if it wasn't for a certain quarterback that was on the field that day. Looking for a cutback lane, but nothing there as he's met at the line of scrimmage. They'll say no gain on the play, and it'll be second and goal. Well, it's been the air game that's taken them down on this drive before they finally turned around and handed it off on the last play. And now they're looking for the big boys to get them in the end zone. Couldn't do it there. It'll be interesting to see. Offensive lines had to pass block a lot on this drive. Will they be able to revert and fire out and create some space in the run game? They'll run. This is Burkhead. And not even back to the line of scrimmage this time as they're on him quickly once more. They'll wind up losing three yards here. And that's going to bring up an interesting third and goal. On goal-to-goal -goal runs, when you create lost yardage plays, the only way that happens is either called pressure or what I like to call straight-ahead pursuit. A great read and they get to the backfield and make the play. And that was a big chunk of yardage lost. The offense on third down, they've been good. Three for four thus far. This is third and goal. Shotgun now for Brady. This will be caught at about the six. And he's able to get it down to the two-yard line. 11 yards, but still not enough. Fourth down. Great change up there on the route and got that inside release, made it a successful pitch and catch. So the first thing you want to do is have him thinking that you're going outside. Make a move in that direction. Then you really don't run the route against the whole body of the defender. You run against a half of him and the inside half, and he took it right across his face, got inside, and won that route in a big way. And Goskowski's kick is good. And that'll push the lead up to 13 to nothing. And Charles, they get the field goal. Took him a dozen plays, though. Work with me on this one. You know what I'm about to say, right? Bend, but don't break. That's what came into play here for the defense. Twelve plays were run at them. They only gave up three points. In a lot of ways, that's a win for the defense.
Goskowski now converted for three. Now he'll kick this one away. This fielded at the two. And a good return. He's across the 35-yard line, right around the 36. Out comes the Jaguar offense now as they get set to take over. And down on the scoreboard, certainly needing to avoid what happened on the last drive, punting the football. Sense of urgency has to take over for them here. They know the score. They know the situation. And by the way, the punter no longer exists for their <laughs> offense. That's how they have to treat this drive. They need points. Big time. They begin with a run by Fournette. And that play is blown up, losing yardage back at the 35. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. We just saw another example of how the defense is winning this game, really at the point of attack. The offensive line is just getting pushed around. I think now as a play caller, you've got to give them a little bit of help. Maybe you keep your tight ends a little bit more. Maybe the running backs help you a little bit with the pass blocking. But you've got to help them get some confidence because you can't abandon the play calling right now. to throw on second down. And he goes down. It's a Patriot sack. I'm starting to feel for that quarterback back there. I mean, you know me. Normally, don't have a lot of empathy for the QB, right? In this case, definitely. He's been on constant duress this entire game. I don't know how he's surviving back there. And to think, there's still a long way to go in this football game. Sack third and long for Bortles and the Jags. Shotgun now for Bortles. And avoids the contact by sliding. It'll be a two yard gain, and that's going to make it fourth down. Brad Nordman now as the drive goes backwards so he's on to punt it away he's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away this is taken at about the 14 and that's going to go in the books as a 55 yard punt well done and that will come the offense as they take over and the Patriots gearing up to go now. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember, they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points and, is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. He'll start off with a give to Lewis. And a short pick up there as he'll take this up to right around the 20. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Well, he hasn't made much of an impact in the running game thus far. And after that last run, not much is going to change in that area. He hasn't been able to get anything going. And really, the offensive line not helping him much. Waiting to throw on second down. Oh, he can't get away, and Brady will go down. Yannick Ngakwe in there to drop him, and it'll be a loss of about eight. Well, that's the second time they've gotten to Brady, and you've got to do it a variety of ways. You want your regular pressure. Sometimes you have to bring extra. But in this case, they got to him, and that just doesn't happen very often. It's a rarity. He's just such a veteran. His pocket presence so good. But, hey, tip of the cap to the D. Oh, 
tough spot for the Pats now after the sack as Brady will lead him up third and long. Now Brady. Looking for Gronkowski, and he's got him complete. And they're going to get this one up to the 35-yard line. 23 yards on the play. Ah, yes, Brady to Gronk. You think these two are in sync? Without a doubt. And look, they both understand what they can do for each other. Gronk knows if he gets open, the ball's going to be there. And Tom Brady knows what a great security blanket Gronk is. When all else fails, you find big 87. Two minutes remain here in the first half. Back to Foxborough after this. We're just two minutes away from sending you to Orlando for Larry Ridley in our EA Sports Halftime Report, so don't forget about that coming up shortly. Yeah, it wouldn't be a halftime without him, and we thank him for doing the highlights. Let's go get a snack. So here we go, first and ten now. Throwing on first down is Brady. It's hauled in by Brandon Cooks. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this into enemy territory across the 40. A really nice gain of 25 yards. Boy, the evolution of the game and how these guys in plays like that can get out of the pocket, keep plays alive. It just makes things so much harder for defenses. It really does. If we're talking about an error in the game, where the quarterbacks are the most athletically gifted that we've seen in a bunch. I mean, when you talk about collectively, it's unbelievable. So their ability to move is practiced now. It's not necessarily, oh, he just took off and you guys figure it out. When he takes off, everyone knows where to go now. They know how to run routes, change things, make themselves presentable for the quarterback. It's a lot of time that they put in on it. It's not just your static one, two, three. This is where the ball goes anymore. Ten yards on the pick up there, and it'll be second down. Second down now after the pass completion. throw again. Sets up the screen to Lewis. And they do get him down, but he's inside the five all the way to the three. A good pick up there, 26 yards. And with that completion, he's now north of 200 yards here in the first half. Boy, a tough start for the secondary defensively. It is, and it's got to put a dent in their confidence. And, you know, you always want to keep that up and feel like you can always bounce back after plays. But with the kind of numbers he's putting up here, it's starting to wear on them a little bit, I think. So they're looking at each other and trying to figure out what defense will work and how can they play better without getting beat deep for big passes. And now we won't see a play on first down. We're going to get a timeout instead. As they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. So we're back in the offense getting set following the call of that timeout. And the offense in a great spot. It's first and goal from the three. Again, they'll throw with Brady. The quick slant caught. 
Now before this second down play, we'll get whistles and a timeout. As the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. This is Lewis, and he is hit pretty hard from the side as he's knocked down. He tried to get the nose of the football across to no avail, and now it's third and goal. I don't know about you, Brandon, but I often think to myself, in these situations, I want a back who can create his own space, who can break tackles, and in a sense, become his own blocker. We don't have that guy in the game right now. So on third down. That's Lewis. Now he's over the line and into the end zone for a Patriot score. Deion Lewis taking it in from a yard out. And the Patriots add six to their lead. I heard a coach talk about those late in the half scores, especially ones that give your team a pretty decent cushion. He said those could be the ones that could finish off a squad if you let them. Yeah, they've got the cushion. This half has been theirs. Extra point try for Goskowski. And that one pushes the lead up to an even 20. So that drive consumes nine plays all told. And it ends with a Deion Lewis touchdown run. Koski now out to kick it away. Here's Corey Grant now to return. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28-yard line. The Jags offense now gets set and heads back onto the field. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. down carry and able to stay on his feet past the 30 to about the 33 yard line and before this second down play we'll get a whistle a signal and a timeout as they stop it with 19 seconds to go in half number one and we're back the offense had a chance to talk things over we'll see what they come up with here on this next play Second down, here's Bortles. And complete to Lewis over the middle. And now before this first down play, we're going to get a timeout here. As they'll stop it with 14 seconds to go in this first half. And welcome back, the offensive unit. They took the timeout. And now they get set to line up as we resume action.
Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. Bortles going to run the draw with Fournette. And he'll be taken down just shy of midfield. Now a timeout signaled for, and they'll get it with 10 seconds to go before halftime. So the offense took the timeout. Looks like they're ready to go as we get set to resume the action. And they're six yards away from picking up the first here on second down. From the gun, it's Bortles. From the sideline, and he will have the first down as he was able to keep the feet in bounds. It goes as a gain of eight, and it moves the chains. If you run an out route, it's likely you end up near the sideline. And what did we just see there? The toe tap. You got it. The benefits of practice. Toe tapping, foot dragging, picking it up and making sure it was a catch. So even though it's first down, here's the field goal unit on now to try to get three before halftime. And this will be spotted on the other side of the field. It's a 61-yard attempt. And I don't think this has the carry. It does not. It's no good. And this score will stay right where it is. And that's the risk of the long field goal miss here at this stage of the second quarter. You give up great field position. And that gives them one more opportunity to make something happen and something big. And we've seen crazy stuff happen at the end of halves. will go as a short gain on what will be the final act of this first half. So we've reached halftime here at Gillette Stadium with the Patriots on top as we send you down to Orlando where we check in with Larry Ridley and our EA Sports Halftime Report. Take it away, Larry. So let's take a look at some of the highlights from the first half. First and 10, Jones has got to get to the quarterback here. This will go as a loss of 10. Later on the drive, the pass ends up being picked off. Patriots will take it back for the touchdown. Patriots push the lead to 10. Down to late in the second. Defense will get to the QB here. This will go for a loss of eight. Staying late in the half. Lewis is going to stay inside after the handoff, and he caps off the eighth play drive for the touchdown. Pat Slee balloons to 20. All right, Larry, indeed a one-sided affair to this point as we get set for half two. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. That's fielded in the end zone. 
And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. The Patriot offense now set to come back out onto the field. They built a good first half lead. Now they have a chance to add on to it. And what I'm thinking is that the offensive staff spent the entire halftime just working with them on, here's what we think they're going to do to attack us in the second half. Nice first half that we've had, guys, but be prepared for some change-ups. We're going to see them when we kick it off in the second half. See how they handle any adjustments that might be made defensively. On first down, Brady toward the left sideline, but it's incomplete. The former Bill, Chris Hogan, the intended receiver. That'll bring up second down. Well, a sidestep here on that incompletion. Of course, the NFL playoffs going on Atlanta, Philadelphia this weekend, first of the four divisional round games. And Matt Ryan going back to Philly and went to high school there. And of course, Atlanta looking to avenge some demons from last year. You think they've got a shot in this one? I do, I absolutely do. Based on how they played in Los Angeles in the first round against the Rams, they took the highest scoring team in the NFL, which averaged around 30 points per game, and held them to 13. That's a big deal. Down the stretch, Atlanta's defense, the last six games of the regular season, held their opponents to approximately 16 points per game. They're getting better on that side of the ball, and they have playoff experience. And don't forget this. Philadelphia does not have Carson Wentz playing quarterback. It's Nick Foles, and they've struggled down the stretch. New England on third down. They've been very good, five for seven thus far. This is third and seven. Throwing is Brady on third down. This is White on the screen. They'll have a first down past the 40. That one good for 13 and a New England first down. Let's give a little credit there. The offensive play caller sends that the screen pass was available. Whenever you're getting a lot of heavy pressure towards your quarterback, that's when you're thinking about running the screen and using that pressure against the defense. And it worked very well there for a first down. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. Brady now on first down. It's caught left side by Cooks. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Another 13 yards there twice in a row, and they're on the move. Another first down as well. time a slant Brady in general on those quick hitters he just releases the ball so fast he does and he's so accurate but most of the time he wins before the ball's even snapped by his pre-snap read finds out where the defense is and delivers it to the proper place so the offense has it first and ten They'll run it now, out of the gun. And not much running room. Down to the 32. A gain of three, second down. Third quarter and you've got the lead. You're not ready to go into that four-minute offense to close the game out, but a running game can really benefit your team right now. So the offense now dealing with a second and seven. Working from the gun, it's Brady. And to the right side here, it's Allen. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. An ex-teammate used to tell me all the time, I hate experienced quarterbacks, because no matter what, 
you really can't hide what you're doing. And I think that right there, he knew right away where the blitz was coming from, where his primary guy was going to be, and he ended up going to a secondary target for a nice game. I was just going to ask you, that wasn't the primary target. And he's so good at that, isn't he? I think he knew right away that he wasn't going to get to his primary guy. I think he read that as soon as he got to the line of scrimmage, knew where the pressure was going to come from, and said, ah, I know how to beat that, and that's what he did. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. I have to say that was a surprise call on third and inches. I thought they'd try and run the football there, but you got to believe they thought they'd surprise the defense and pick up something downfield, but that one goes incomplete. And Goskowski's kick is good. And that will up the score now. It's 23 zip. So three field goals for him here, and this last one helps him stretch out the lead. And he's been solid as usual. And this is what you need to do. Make sure you get points out of every possession. And so far, they've done a nice job of that. Goskowski now converted for three. Now he'll kick this one away. This is taken at the three. And a good effort on the return there. Gets him across the 30 to the 33-yard line. Here comes the Jags offense now. Time for their first possession of half number two. They're down in this game. A chance for the offense, though, to put something on the board, get some momentum here in half two. Try and get things kick-started for them. And you know at the half, they discussed how they were going to get that done. This is where scripting comes into play a lot how, of the how time. How many plays do you script coming out of the second most, most of the time in the first half, you're scripting 12 to 16. I think in the second half, you're really scripting more like 8 to 10. Kind of a starter or an opener, whatever they whatever terminology they use. Just something to get you off to a Here quick start. <laughs> Trying to get the run game going. This is Fournette. And he'll get this up to about the 40. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. And the offense still has a couple plays to go to pick up the first on second down and three. Now Bortles. And this is going to be caught, but they'll say out of bounds. So it's incomplete. I don't know about you, but I wanted to reach out of the booth and snatch that pass myself. That thing floated forever up there. I think that threw off the timing of the receiver. That's why he couldn't get his feet down, even though he caught the ball. You know, Charles, I, I would have liked to have seen that. Yeah, me I, too. For, for you. I, I wanted to see you reach out and catch that. Yeah, you've heard about my hands, huh? <laughs> Bortles going to try and throw on third down. And this is going to be incomplete. Another drive comes and goes. Still nothing on the scoreboard. Yeah, and when the second half comes, you know, it's real easy to get discouraged and wonder if you're ever going to get things started. You just got to fight through it. Got to keep pounding away. Here's Brad Nordman now. He's been one of their few bright spots so far. And this is going to hit the goal line and continue on into the end zone for a touchback. Out comes the New England offense to see what they can do this time. And they're not going to play this conservative, I don't think. They had the field goal last time, and they're up, but they're looking to put a drive in the end zone. Oh, I agree with you totally. No one goes out on the field and says, all right, let's just settle for three, except in certain situations, trying to ice a game, that sort of deal. Most of the time, it's end zone, and that's what you're thinking, and I believe that's exactly what they're thinking as they begin this one. Yeah, no quarterback ever goes out there saying, hey, let's get three, right? <laughs> Not one that I've ever met. Throwing on first down, Brady. The throw left side, complete to Hogan. 
And he'll be out of bounds at the 25-yard line. Five yards on the catch there brings up second down. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. But slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. So second and medium, second and five now. This is Lewis. And he's able to plow forward up to about the 29, just shy of the 30. Call it a gain of four there, so it sets up a big play here. Third and a yard. On any running play this call, they're always hoping that it's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice gain like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. Brady now to throw. just toss it away so he throws it away and that brings up fourth down not too many things get to a quarterback of this magnitude but I think it's safe to say that pressure can get to any quarterback now he's obviously a great franchise quarterback but felt the pressure threw it incomplete here's Ryan Allen now and the way this offense has moved the ball he hasn't been needed till here in the third job on the return there 16 yards and the Jaguars go on offense first down and 10 and out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go these guys had to punt last time it has not been a very fruitful game offensively thus far they haven't even made a trip to the red zone and I know that everyone's going crazy on that sideline because that drives you berserk to come off the field not really move the ball well as you said not even get to the red zone let alone you know not even put points on the board They've got to just take a deep breath, relax, try to figure out what is working, and call more of that. Here's a give to Fournette. He'll be tackled shy of the 35. The power move there couldn't buy him much space. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. Defenses always talk about earning the right to rush the passer on third down. And you know what offenses want? win first down so that can set things up for themselves better and that wasn't helpful there not a big impact on first down now Bortles throwing on second down the Pats are going to get there down he goes the amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary let's just face it this offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Sack third and long for Bortles and the Jags. Working from the gun, it's Bortles. Oh, the pressure too great, and he goes down once more. Brandon, I think you understand the type of afternoon this offensive line is having. It is a long one for them. Long for you to spend it with me. Long for them trying to block those guys. They've given up a whole lot of sacks, and the speed and quickness of that defensive line is eating them alive. Here's Brad Nordman now. He's been terrific so far. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. <coughs> a big boot that time. 57 yards the official distance. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. 
Now the Patriots offense, they work their way back out onto the field. They've got the lead. Last time had to punt it, though. What's the key to this drive? I think it's leverage. Ah, the leverage. big guys up front. You know the motivational speech on the sideline is, guys, give us an opportunity. Protect the passer, create space for our runners, and let's go ahead and get these guys. Low man wins. Let's go do it on this drive. <laughs> we'll watch that leverage on this drive. Wait, 20. Wait, 20. On first and ten, here's Brady. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. Looking for his all-pro tight end, Rob Gronkowski. And it's second down. Well, partner, let's step to the side for a minute here. Take a peek ahead to this week's divisional round game. You got Tennessee and New England. That's the late game Saturday night. Didn't play this year, but the Patriots have beaten them the last six times they have played. And the focus, of course, will be on the quarterbacks. I mean, Tom Brady's played at what many people think is an MVP level in 2017 during the season. And Marcus Mariota didn't have that type of a year, but the first playoff game, we saw the Marcus. Deion Lewis, the 40, 30, the 20, and all the way in. Touchdown, New England. Deion Lewis, an 80-yard touchdown, and the Patriots continue to roll. And that run massively increased his production in this game, and now he's over 100 yards. And break out your calculator, partner, because his yards per carry went up it's significantly, skyrocket. right? Big-time jaunt all the way to the end zone. Goskowski for the point after. And the lead is now an even 30. The quick strike ability certainly intact there. Two plays, 80 yards to score. Koski now out to kick it away. This is taken at the three. And he'll get it up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. The Jaguars getting set to go. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. right off the bat here as he's up to about the 24-yard line. Yeah, give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. Tough running there. That's a hard-earned four yards. Yeah, those are the unsung kind of runs. They don't fill up the stat sheet, but they do set you up in good position on second down. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. Here's Bortles to throw. He finds Hearns left side. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. It's a seven-yard gain there, and it's good enough to move the chains. He decided to run a hitch route. It really helps to have a guy who can turn it loose. And, boy, he rifled one in there on that one. Not much run after catch, but it worked really well. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. Double tight, guys, double tight. Here we go now. Three, 39. 
Now Bortles. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. Marquise Lee, the intended target. And now it's second down. Well, allow me, if you will, to take a look back to Wild Card Weekend. And one of the interesting stats that came out of that weekend is that we had four quarterbacks making their first playoff start. How about that? How about that? And we're talking about Marcus Mariota at Tennessee, Jared Goff with the Rams, Tyrod Taylor, hey. Buffalo, and Blake Bortles with Jacksonville. And since 2013, Quarterbacks making their first playoff start. Their debuts were 1-10 in 10 yeah. prior to this past weekend. Got two winners out of this one, though, and Mariota at Kansas City and Bortles at home against Buffalo. Fresh set of downs here. A handoff to Fournette. <laughs> Despite the heavy running, he'll be hit and dropped shy of the 45. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. Offensive linemen love creating space for their guys carrying the ball. But when that guy also breaks tackles and creates extra yardage, they almost feel like he's one of them, and they really embrace him. Three yards remaining here on second down. Now Bortles on the bootleg. And that's incomplete. The running back, Leonard Fournette, his intended receiver, and it's third and short. I know our vantage point might be a little bit better way up here, but that looked like an ill-advised throw to me. I didn't see anything open, and this play just didn't look right from the beginning. It did not. I thought he might get outside and just chuck it away. Dangerous pass, incomplete. The Jaguars on third down. It's been a problem, just one for seven thus far. This time, it's third and three. Throwing his Bortles. And he's got some space here. And he's going to have the first down yardage as he's down at about the 30-yard line. 16 yards that time on the pickup for the Jags and a first down. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. Now a play fake here on first down. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. This has been a tough one for this offensive line. It appears almost like they've been on roller skates this entire game. The way they've been pushed around. Six sacks given up in this one. So the defense has put them in a tough spot. It's second and long. Here we go. Three, three, three. Shotgun now for Bortles. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Trying to get it there to D.D. Westbrook. And that takes us from second to third down. Let's face it, you can run the route tree as many times as you want. Get in sync, practice it, do all those things. But once you get the game speed, it doesn't always time up quite that well. That one goes incomplete. The Jaguars on third down. They've struggled to the tune of two for eight so far. This will be third and 15. The play fake to Ivory. Now Bortles. And some space here. And he'll go down here right around the 23-yard line. It'll be a gain of 11. And it'll be fourth down.
So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. From the right hash, this from an even 40 yards out. And Lambeau will put this one through, and the drive will wind up yielding three. Well, I guess we're at the stage here where they wouldn't say no to any points, but I don't think field goals are what they're looking for here in the second half. I don't either, Brandon. When you're down as much as they are, that's the sign of a head coach waving the white flag to me. Now after the main field goal, back out Lambeau to kick this one off. That'll be taken in the end zone. Oh, a little 360. Oh, <laughs> and he'll get it up to about the 26-yard line just across the 25. All right, let's discuss Deion Lewis as he gets set to go again. Responsible for well over 100 yards of total offense, but still hasn't found the end zone. you think that's in the back of his mind going into this drive? It's always in the back of the mind of a player who's having that type of a day because you want that gratification for your work, right? You want that stamp on top of everything. But bottom line for him, he's doing great work. Sometimes it just opens it up for other people to actually get into the end zone for him. The runners you know, would they rather have 60 yards, three touchdowns, or 150 no touchdowns? I think more than likely 150 and no touchdowns, but all the runners that I know would say, I'll take 150 and three touchdowns. They're greedy that way. To the sideline and complete to Gronkowski. 23 yards on the play. Let's make this one simple. What a catch, especially the finishing part of getting his feet in bounds, toe tapping, and of course, foot dragging. A little tapestry, if you will. Oh, I like it. So the offense lining up first and 10. And again, this time to the tailback. And he'll go down, and that will do it for the third quarter of action. We've played three quarters. But we'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Foxborough. A lot of happy faces in the crowd at this point as their guys have a big lead here to start quarter number four. See if they stay on the ground for second down. Again, it's Lewis. And he might have got this across midfield, not by much. They'll mark it down at the 49. Only a gain of a couple there. That leaves them needing about seven here on third down. This is what happens sometimes when you abandon the running game. It's hard to get back to it because once guys get out of that mentality of firing out and hitting people, hard to get them started again occasionally. New England on third down. They're hitting at 60%, 6 out of 10 thus far. This is third and seven. They'll run it here. This is James White, and he's going to be stopped up at about the 47-yard line. Just a gain of two there, and it's going to bring up a fourth down. Here's Ryan Allen now, as he'll kick it away for the second time. Uh, 
And they won't risk defending a return here. That one's out of bounds, and it'll be spotted. And spotted at the 14-yard line. Out comes the Jacksonville offense as they get set to take over here. And last time, able to get three. It's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. They'll take it. Just I, I like the way you, you've described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. First down, Bortles. And an alley to run. And he will avoid the contact as he slides to a stop. It's a nine-yard pickup on the play. And it'll be second and about a yard to go for the first. to throw on second down. He'll check this one off to Fournette. And he'll get to the 29-yard line brought down there. It's a pickup of six and good enough to move the chains. And that's one of his advantages of a passer, is it not? With his height, setting back there in the pocket, firing over the middle, he can really see everything clearly. It is, and I know that other quarterbacks get it done different ways, all right? You don't have to be his height to make a great play. But what he does is he takes away having to make those slide steps in the pocket to find angles to throw the ball through. He just throws right over the top of it because he can see everything. And sometimes that saves time and gets the ball to a receiver quicker. And he was hit as he threw it there, and it forces it incomplete. We've seen this quite a few times in this game. Offensive line unable to keep leverage, unable to keep people away, facing a lot of pressure. Fortunate, fortunate just to get rid of it. One of the reasons they're down is that inability, though, to stop the pressure. We saw another example of it there. A fake to Fournette. Now it's Bortles to throw. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. Give him two yards on that play. And just like that, it's third down. The Jaguars on third down. Not so hot. Two for nine to this point. This is third and eight. They'll run it now out of the gun. And not much of an opening there as he's only going to get this to about the 32. Only a yard of the pick up there, and it's going to leave him with a fourth down. A critical one here if they're going to have any shot at this thing. So they'll go for it on fourth down. Now Bortles got to have this one. And that's complete to Lewis. And he's got the first down yardage as he brings this up to the 47. That one a pickup of 15 for Jacksonville. Fourth down trailing in the fourth quarter. They felt compelled to go for it, and they got it. Well, I'd look down at my play sheet, and what I would find... Plays have been successful throughout the game that have worked at the distance you need. And that's exactly what they got done. And here comes play number six on this drive. They go play action here on first down. And his throw is going to be incomplete. He was looking for James O'Shaughnessy as tight end. And that'll bring up second down. Another wayward pass. You know, things started out poorly in this game. And to be frank, they just really haven't gotten much better. And all that does is embolden a secondary. They feel good about what's going on. And they just play better and better. Here we go. Three, 
Bortles will try again on second down. And he'll avoid the tackle there with a slide. It'll be a three-yard gain, and it'll be third down. Jaguars on third down. Just a 20% success rate at 2 of 10. This is third and seven. Blue 45. Blue 45. From the gun, it's Bortles. He's got Lewis. And he's got the first before he's brought down at the 39-yard line. First down, Jacksonville. The passing game looking sharp on this drive for the Jags. Well, clearly one of his advantages as a passer is his height, sit back in the pocket, fired over the middle. That makes things tougher defensively, doesn't it? It really does because your goal is to move the quarterback off his initial spot when he gets his drop back completed. But when you have that type of height, he can stay in there. If he's willing to take the hits and just fire over the top, which saves him time and actually completes a play a little bit quicker than it normally does for a quarterback has a slide and five open space to throw. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he's going to get this inside the 30. Back-to-back -back nice plays. 12 yards that time and a first down. Well, partner, I know this type of running back. I mean, this size, this intensity usually gets better as the game goes on. And I can just tell you from experience, the first few quarters, oh, you're eager. You come running up there. I'm going to tackle this guy. By the fourth quarter, you're coming up and thinking about it. And D-line wearing down fourth quarter. Yeah, that's not a guy they want to see consistently. And a really long drive here, and it goes on and on. Bortles now on first down. He's going to find his running back. It's complete. And taking it to the 15-yard line before he's brought down. 11 more on that one and another first down. And this is why trying to cover the angle route is so difficult. Anyone playing the linebacker position, when they see a running back out of the backfield widen because he heads towards the flat first, oftentimes you widen too much and overcommit. He cuts up inside, and that's what we saw there. A nice pickup for a first down. So here we go, first and 10 now. Now Leonard Fournette, and he goes backwards here, losing yardage back to the 16. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. Well, he had two sacks earlier. Now he has four total tackles for a loss after that play. Well, they obviously have to do a better job trying to block it, but short of that, you know what the quarterback has to do? Make sure he doesn't hand it to him when he's back there thinking he's one of his own guys. His quickness, his suddenness, his speed getting into the offense's backfield, has been something else in this game. And this seemingly endless drive continues. They'll run it again with Fournette. Trying to run inside, but nothing there. No gain that time, and it leaves him with third and 11 coming up. They were stopped on that play. We've had plenty of carries all afternoon. Every now and then, the defense is going to win one, but I don't think they'll shy away from handing it to him the rest of the game. The Jaguars on third down. They've had a lot of chances, but not much success, converting only three times. This is third and 11. They'll run it now out of the gun. He didn't get the touchdown, but he did get the first down as he's tackled at the one. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Well, depending on the temperament of the head coach, He's either turning to the bench and screaming, where was that all game? Or maybe he's just kind of keeping it to himself and saying, okay, it's something to build on. And a positive comes out of a bad game because those are going to happen from time to time. We'll see how he gets his team ready to go in the future. But that run right there, that's what they were looking for. They'll try to punch it in with Fournette. Call it no gain, and it's going to be second and goal. They're right there at the one. No gain, but don't let that stop you. Line back up and keep going at them. If I'm them, I'm thinking about going at it four straight times. Oh, long drive. The defense just cannot seem to catch a break and get off the field. 
Second and goal from the one. They'll give Ford out another crack, and he'll take this one in for a Jags touchdown. A great play there, punching it in from a yard away. And the Jaguars get a score closer. Could not block that one any better. Everyone was accounted for, and a great surge by the offensive line. Josh Lambeau now for the point after. And the lead is down to 20. And what a drive that was. 16 plays all told. And it ends with a one-yard touchdown run. Still lots of work left to do, but here comes the onside kick. And this is secured by the Patriots. The well, fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And I know we brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it, they do actually recover the ball, which is what we saw here. I just wonder if that number is much more of a anecdotal type of a number. Kind of like when the coaches tell us, well, when you score on special teams, 93% <laughs> of the time you win the game. I'm still waiting to see that number is empirical. the shoulder pads took him right off his feet right there at the 43. I like that run right there partner not the flashiest run not the one that's going to break for big yardage but he understands the situation and taking care of the football paramount and he got it done. Nursing that slim lead you're exactly right hold on to that ball. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he's going to take it down to about the 35 here. And he's able to get most of what he needed on the carry there. Seven yards on the gain, and it's third and two now. I like a guy who understands the situation. I also like a guy who you look at him and you say, that looks like a guy who knows the coach is going to say, guess what? You drop this one, you'll be carrying around the training facility for an entire week. <laughs> Maybe flashback to high school or college, carrying it around campus, right? Maybe the old gauntlet drill, right? Anyone get the ball out while he's, while he's sitting in class and bring it back to the coach? He's in big trouble. Brady looking to throw on third and two. And he's got a man open. That's Allen. And he picks up the first before he's taken down at the 29. They get six on the pickup there as the drive will continue. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to, pick up a first down. And this will probably be the final play before the two-minute warning. Time for a break. We're back to finish this one off after this. So the Patriots with the football as we get you reset. And no doubt what they're looking to do is just salt away the final couple of minutes and escape with a win. Oh, 
Now a handoff as they run left side. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. Call it a loss of two on the play. And that'll make it second and 12. So, Brandon, when this offense gathers together to watch tape for this game, they're going to be feeling pretty good about themselves until the coaches get upset about the play we just saw. But you know their defense is going to be. But we put up big points all game long. The defense is going to win one every now and then. going to take it all the way down and just take the delay. Delay of game, offense. That's going to set him back five yards. Still second down. time of the tailback and maybe a measure of revenge there he's had his way in this one but this time they get him behind the line it'll wind up being a loss of two and they're going to face an uphill battle here on third and long hey a lot of points have been scored in this game but what a nice play by the defense stepping up on that one maybe they'll get things going in their direction after a play like that And facing a very tough third and 19 here after both of those running plays went backwards. Now a carry for White. And he'll take this one down to the 36. Two yards on the pickup there. It's fourth down. I like what they were thinking on defense. Just guard the first down sticks. Don't let anyone pass that. Didn't matter whether they threw it or ran it. They just ended up rallying to the football in the running play and stopped them short of a first down. And they won't run a play here. No victory formation. They will indeed try to get three more. And quite a bit of pizza in this box. It's a 53-yard attempt. And Charles, I think when the schedule comes out, all teams, no matter where they're predicted to finish, talk about protecting your home turf. They were able to do that here in this one. Similar to a tennis match, right? Not letting them break your serve. That way you hold on to it. They got it done, and they feel very good about that victory. So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. The Patriots winners say so long from Foxborough.